Today's golf courses want to be memorable. They use buzz phrases like country club for a day or the overall golf experience. At Tarpon Woods Golf Club, they use a different buzz phrase. Let's party! This is the kickoff to our big fundraising weekend. We have John Cafferty from the Beaver Brown Band, Michael Antunes from the Beaver Brown Band, Mike Reno from Loverboy. We have Robbie Steinhardt from Kansas. We have got a great lineup backed by the Stormbringer Band. We've been doing this for a lot of years, but this is only the second time we've done it with these groups. happen at Tarpon Woods with this weekend, your Celebrity right. Invitational. How did it all come about, Jim? Well, you know, we've, we've done so many events, as you know, over the years for charities, and when it was just a regular Crossroads Foundation, we would raise money and then pass it on, but now that we own Tarpon Woods, we could actually have a golf event for ourselves, and all of my friends and celebrity friends and golfers have been able to help support it, so we have this is our second event. All the money goes to the disabled vets and first responders, and we teach them. We teach them not just golf, but we teach them the golf business. So, we most of the people that work here are, you know, wounded vets or vets, and so it's great to be able to help them all get in the golf business. We teach them how to build golf clubs and try to get them another job. But also, they really love to play golf. So, we once a month we have an instructional clinic, and we all come out and give lessons for free. My name is Brian Anderson. I'm a retired Green Beret. Um, I did three deployments. A uh, couple in Afghanistan, lost some teammates, and the game of golf is one of those games that, uh, you know, you follow a little ball. But when Jan Stevenson and Tarpon Woods and the Jan Stevenson Foundation gives opportunities for us to learn this game, it gives us something else when we leave combat, when we come back home. And so it's a great gift, and I'm glad to be out here playing. People that I paid the first time to come help me teach now volunteer, and even some of the veterans that came to learn have now volunteered. The community gets behind it. It's kind of like, you know, we've both adopted each other since I've moved here. It was something that I actually thought, you know, maybe one day I, when I die, they'll, they'll realize that, you know, whatever I did that, that they didn't care for. And of course, it's so funny because all the things that I did early on in my career, my com the commissioner kept saying, this is going to get your Hall of Fame, if nothing else, what you've done to save the LPGA. And then as we got older, those people were all gone and didn't realize what I did. So it was like, and they changed the rules and it was all a lot younger people in it and different committees and they didn't know what I've done. And, so I was actually convinced I was not going to get there. And then, the, 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 actually it was cute because Nancy Lopez, the, the, the final four, which is the last committee, is Jack Nicklaus, Gary Player, Annika, and Nancy. So the four of them sat down and they had to call everybody on speaker to tell them, that, you know, because I, I've been in the last, a few times, you know, the last final 12 or in the last ballot. And I didn't think that I was ever going to get to that the big one. Right? So Nancy called me two years ago, and I really thought I was going to get it. And she said, um, you know, I know you worked so hard during that time you and I were out there doing so much for the tour, but you didn't make it. And so she started this, the conversation exactly the same way. And she said, you know, I know you've worked really hard. So I started crying so hard. I didn't hear her say that I made it. I was bawling. And, and everybody, I was actually in, in um, the store, and everybody's looking because I'm crying crying so hard and she goes wait wait and I'm like what and she goes you made it and I'm like what <laughs> and, and I heard Gary Player and Jack Nicholas laughing in the background and I went oh, if they're behind they're not there to say I didn't make it and I went oh my god I did and then I started crying again and I never cry when I'm happy and I was bawling. Jan Stevenson World Golf Hall of Fame Hollis Stacy was so happy to have her friend join her in the Hall of Fame uh, nice reunion for you. Oh, it's wonderful. Anything to help Jan out. I'm so proud of Jan. She deserves to be in the World Golf Hall of Fame. Yeah. And you deserve to be out here in this function. It's a 
fun weekend. I know. Well, anything to honor the veterans, because my dad was a World War II veteran, and uh, uh, I love the veterans, and it's just a great cause. two in a row come on people might wonder what the traveling golfer has in common with PGA Tour player Robert Gamez plenty oh yeah uh, that's only good if you like it the best position you can put it in same height <laughs> same Antigua golf apparel we both play the Srixon yellow golf ball and we both use the Four yards more tea, but more important, we share the same passion for the cause behind the Jan Stevenson Celebrity Invitational. Absolutely. Being able to be here for Jan and help her out with her charity work is very gratifying for me. My charity event is actually next weekend in Orlando and she comes down, comes over and, and helps me with that as well. So, you know, that the golf community is, especially the professionals, we're all, we're a close-knit family. Anytime we ask for help and in raising money for, for different charities. If we can do it, we're going to be here. Same shot. Well, she may be from Australia. She may be in the World Golf Hall of Fame, but she is Above all else, great American. Oh, thank you. I'm very proud to be an American.